Welcome to Forum Chess Club. Today we are going to look at the Grenfell opening, which is the venomous reply to the Queen's Pawn opening. It begins with the moves Pawn to D4, Knight to F6, Pawn to C4, Pawn to G6, Knight C3, and then the signature move, which is Pawn to D5. In the Grenfell, Black rejects the principle of occupying the center with the pawns, and instead he prioritizes rapid development and peace pressure on the center in order to see if he can create some headaches as quickly as possible. Let's take a look. The Grenfell is an aggressive response to the Queen's Pawn opening, so it usually starts with the move Pawn to D4, Knight to F6, and then Pawn to C4. Now, Black set up the development of his dark squared bishop with the move Pawn to G6. Now, after White continues Knight C3, he is planning to bring a third pawn to the center with E4. And now, Black select the Grenfell by playing the move Pawn to D5 this move might look innocent enough, but in fact, it's part of an all-out strategy to get a sensitive point in White's camp, and namely, that's the d4 square. So, the Grenfell is very much so a strategy which is built around trying to get at this pawn and trying to break it down. Eventually, what Black's to do is to trade off his d-pawn, which will open up the queen for an attack. And he's going to use his bishop on g7, and he's going to use the peace pressure and pawn pressure to try to break down this d4 point. We are going to get a chance to see that in just a moment. We could say that in the grand field, black is sort of playing a little trick on white. In most openings, both sides are going to fight hard to occupy the center with the pawn. But in the grand field, black actually lures white into setting up an enormous pawn center with a sneaky ambition to attacking it later. This is a double-edged strategy which could end in either glorious success for black or or sometimes it could lead to a total disaster. Now, the clearest example of the strategic claim it happens after pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, and pawn to e4. When black's major aim is going to do combined peace pressure and the pawn pressure against the d4 point. This leads to a really paradoxical area of chess strategy, which is that advancing pawn is generally a good thing. White has advanced to two center pawns here, and this does a few things. This gives his pieces some free lines and squares. It also restricted the enemy pieces and pushed them back. And in the event of an end game, it also means that white pawns are a little bit closer to the promotion. So these are the three big upsides to advancing our pawns, but there are also downside to advancing the pawn, which is that they invariably creates weak squares behind them. Since pawns cannot move backwards, and they are also the best defenders. So in this case, since white has moved both his e pawn and his c pawn, he has, he has a tender point on d4. In a way, the Grenfell is a kind of a battle between two opposing strategies. White says, I am just going to take the center and I am going to enjoy the benefit of having extra center control and extra space. Black for his part is saying that, I am going to give you the center just for a little while and I am going to use the extra time to develop my pieces and then attack the center ferociously and see if I can break it down and leave you with all kind of weaknesses. So both sides have a clear strategy and they also take on a clear risk. Now the position which we are showing after white has captured on d4 and then pawn to e4 is known as the exchange variation. This represents white's most popular book line against the grand field. From here, black now captures on c3 and white recaptures. Black completes his bishop to g7. I think you will notice right away that white indeed has a huge pawn center. His pieces have plenty of flexibility about how they can be deployed and black always have some funny problem finding squares for some of his pieces because the because the pawn center it controls just so many squares in this position. Also can rapidly be advanced. For example, e5 or d5 could always push some material backwards but black is positioned to assault the pawn center. There are plenty of way white can play and press for an advantage in the double ended game. But for instrumental purposes, let's focus on what happens if white doesn't think carefully about how he deploy his pieces next. After the very reasonable developing move knight to f3, black would play pawn to c5. And I just want to give you an example of how quickly white can fall under a typical Grenfell attack. If he just plays bishop to e2, he is going to find out very quickly what it means to come under assault in the center, which is black would play knight to c6. Immediately he is already attacking the pawn four times. That means this boy has no choice but to defend the pawn. He has to play bishop to e3. If he simply advances the pawn, then black would win a material with bishop takes c3 check. The rook would also be under attack. Instead, white normally plays bishop to e3 in this position. And now black can step up pressure once again by playing bishop to g4, which threatens to win a pawn once again as one of the defender is under attack. At this point, white has no choice but to play pawn to e5 
which fixes his pawn in the center and also weaknesses the light squares as well. Now black could set up a pressure by first playing pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn and then he would castle on the king side followed by white castle on the king side and now simply play queen to d4, d7 followed by bringing up the rook to d8. In this position black already has something of an initiative here. He's developed his pieces comfortably and white has weaknesses on a2, d4 and on the light squares. So in so this is already an example of just how quickly the position can come out of the control for white. In the exchange variation, white needs to think about how to slow down black's counterattack, and he's got a few ways to do this. Mostly, he want to pay attention to not allowing this light square bishop to also participate in the attack. So one very fascinating way to do this is rook to b1. This leads to a very short position by putting pressure on the b7 pawn. White is making it much more difficult for black to eventually bring the light square bishop into the game. Certainly, there are some antidotes to this for black. There are a couple of known methods which allow black to get an interesting complicated game but this is very dangerous very short position and black has to fight very hard not to get into a horrifyingly passive position another way to cope up this problem would be delay developing the knight to f3 for example bishop to c4 is a is known as the classical variation and the idea of this line is, is that instead of uh, developing the knight to f3 white is going to develop the knight to e2 by doing this he always ready to counter the pin on g4 with the move f3 this is also a very interesting strategy white is just going to try to continue his development and build up an attack using the center. Another method of development is just to play bishop e3 early on into these positions and the idea here is to first to shore up these uh, things along with this diagonal by playing uh, queen to uh, B d2 and then you and then either uh, rook to uh, c1 or rook to d1 and only later is white going to develop the uh, king side pieces and these positions he might even also consider playing uh, d5 once after he defends the pawn on c3 and he's going to try to give black as many as headaches as possible before continuing his development this setup also has a lot of potential for white so now we have seen a few ways white can attack and put pressure on black in the exchange variation let's back up now and look at another approach for white uh, which is also very principled and this is known as the classical variation. This one begins with the move knight to f3 and, and now black just continues with the development bishop to g7. Instead of taking on d5, black plays queen to b3 putting pressure on the d5. Now of course black could simply defend the pawn uh, just by saying uh, c6 but this would very passive or not the idea not the kind of idea uh, which we are aiming for in the grand field. We want to use that pawn to attack on the c5 later. So instead black takes c4. White recaptures with the queen, black castle on the king's side and white plays e4. Now in this case, in the classical vari variation, white center is little bit more compact and it's easier to defend. But he's already lost a tempo for general development since he has made a couple of uh, queen moves in this position and it's likely that he will lose some more time if the queen ends up cha getting chased around. For example, maybe uh, a6 and then and then b5 at some point, uh, gain some time for black in this position or some other ideas. And black saw every aim of breaking down the center with the move uh, pawn to c5. Uh, so this is a very popular alternative to the exchange variations uh, since it has a little bit less risk. Black has moved a few less pawns in this position but the center can still come under attack and we can see that the major idea of the grand field is pressurizing d4 still stands even in these positions. There are certainly few other major strategies for white in the grand field but I hope this has given you a foothold on some of the core concept of the grand field opening. Now certainly as black this is a very attractive attractive opening for players who are willing to take some risk with black in order to look for a complicated and interesting tactical game where they have counter chances. On the other hand, I think that studying this opening as white is also a great idea since it can teach you how to safely and strategically advance the center and uh, avoid creating too many weaknesses in the process. That's all for today and I look forward to seeing you again with other opening. Thank you for watching.